Hello my friends and welcome back to the You Can Do TV channel. The steel coil production process starts with scrap processing, where scrap metal, such as old cars and appliances, is collected, sorted, and melted in an electric arc furnace. This furnace uses high electrical currents to melt the scrap metal into molten steel, allowing the recycling of various steel products. The molten steel is then treated to remove impurities like sulfur and phosphorus. Slag, a byproduct that contains these impurities, is separated from the steel during the refining process. Once refined, the steel is transferred via a ladle to a casting machine, where the ladle tips and pours the molten steel into a continuous casting system. In this stage, the steel is solidified into semi-finished slabs. These slabs typically undergo inspections to ensure quality and consistency before moving to the next phase of production. After casting, the slabs are transferred to a hot rolling mill. First, the slabs are reheated in a furnace to prepare them for rolling. They are then passed through a roughing mill, which reduces the thickness significantly. Following this, the steel enters the finishing mill, where precise adjustments are made to control the final thickness, width, and surface quality of the steel strip. As the steel is rolled, temperature control is critical to ensure uniformity and prevent defects. The strip is coiled at the end of the process into large steel coils, which are then cooled, inspected, and prepared for shipment to customers. The LPG cylinder production process begins with the blanking and body forming line, where steel sheets are cut into circular blanks using a double blanking press. These blanks are then fed into a hydraulic deep drawing press that shapes them into the two halves of the cylinder body. Each half undergoes trimming and joggling to prepare their edges for the subsequent welding process. The forming line is typically automated, ensuring precision and efficiency. In some cases, coil material can also be used directly to streamline the process. The forming line is typically automated, ensuring precision and efficiency. This line starts with the blanking process, where large steel sheets or coils are fed into a double blanking press that cuts the steel into circular blanks. These blanks are the initial components that will form the main body of the LPG cylinder. Next, the blanks are transferred to deep drawing presses, which use hydraulic force to shape the flat blanks into cylindrical forms. These presses are typically double-action hydraulic machines, ensuring smooth and accurate forming of the upper and lower halves of the cylinder. During this stage, the steel undergoes significant deformation to form the correct shape, and the deep drawing press ensures the required strength and thickness consistency for safety. Once the halves are formed, they move to the trimming and joggling stage, where the edges of the formed halves are processed to ensure a clean, uniform edge. This step is critical for preparing the halves for seam welding in later stages, as it ensures the two halves will join seamlessly. The entire forming line is automated, with systems for automatic loading and unloading of materials and blanks, reducing manual labor and increasing production efficiency.
Next is the valve boss production, where steel rods are cut to the required length. These pieces are then induction heated to around 1200 degrees Celsius to reach forging temperature. Once heated, they are forged into the valve boss shape using a forging press. After forging, the valve bosses undergo flash trimming to remove excess material and hole piercing to prepare them for valve attachment. A precise turning operation finalizes the valve threads. The guard ring and foot ring production line follows, where strips of coiled or pre-cut sheet steel are formed into the valve guard rings and foot rings. The metal strips are processed through hydraulic presses for embossing logos or serial numbers. The blank foot and guard rings are bent into shape and welded using MIG MAG welding machines to form the final components. The welding line involve attaching the upper and lower cylinder halves, the valve boss, valve guard ring, and foot ring. The valve boss, which holds the valve of the LPG cylinder, is attached to the upper cylinder half using saw as well. The precision of this weld is important because the valve boss must securely hold the valve under pressure. The welding automats ensure a consistent weld quality, critical for the structural stability and leak-proof performance of the valve area. The valve guard ring and foot ring are welded onto the upper and lower parts of the cylinder, respectively, using MIG MAG welding. MIG metal inert gas and MAG metal active gas. Welding techniques are chosen for these components due to their ability to produce clean, high-quality welds at a fast rate. The rings provide structural support and protection, and they must be welded securely to withstand rough handling and external impacts during transportation and use. The upper and lower halves of the cylinder body, previously formed in the body forming line, are joined using the submerged arc welding saw, technique. Saw is highly effective for this type of application due to its ability to provide deep weld penetration and high quality, uniform welds. The process is automated, with the halves positioned in a seam welding machine, where the weld is laid along the entire circumference of the cylinder. The welding wire is continuously fed submerged under a protective flux layer, which shields the weld from contaminants, ensuring a defect-free, high-strength seam. This seam forms the core of the LPG cylinder, and its integrity is crucial for safety. Thank you. 
After welding, the cylinders are subjected to heat treatment to relieve any internal stresses caused by welding and forming. This process heats the cylinders to approximately 930 degrees Celsius, after which they are slowly cooled. Once heat treated, the cylinders undergo a hydrostatic test on an automated carousel or fixed station machine. This test increases the internal pressure of each cylinder to check for any leaks or defects in the welds or material. Cylinders that pass the hydrostatic test move on to the next phase, which is surface treatment. In the shot blasting phase, the cylinders are cleaned to remove scale and impurities caused by heat treatment. After blasting, the cylinders enter the wet painting line, where they are coated with a primer and a final paint layer. This painting process is typically automated, with robotic arms applying the paint as the cylinders move along a conveyor system. The paint is cured in an oven to ensure durability. Finally, 
The cylinders enter the finishing line, where valves are attached, and the cylinder undergoes a pneumatic leakage test. This step ensures that the valve is securely attached and that no leaks are present. The cylinders are weighed, marked, and prepared for dispatch. Quality control tests, such as a burst expansion test, may also be performed to verify the cylinder's durability under pressure. The production of razor blades begins with pressing, where sheets of stainless steel are fed into a high-precision press. This machine cuts out individual blade shapes, ensuring consistency in size and thickness. The steel blanks are then prepared for further processing. Next is the thermal process where the steel blanks undergo controlled heating to improve their hardness and durability. This heat treatment ensures the blades maintain their sharpness for a longer period and enhances their wear resistance. Once hardened, the blades move on to the blade edging stage. Advanced machinery grinds and sharpens the edges to a fine, precise angle. The sharpening is followed by polishing to smooth out any rough edges, making the blade safe and efficient for shaving. Each blade is then subject to inspection to ensure it meets the strict standards for sharpness and consistency. After inspection, the blades are coated with a special sintering process that applies a protective layer, often using materials like platinum or Teflon. This coating reduces friction during shaving, ensuring a smooth glide over the skin. Before moving forward, the blades undergo a sharpness test. Each blade's cutting ability is evaluated to guarantee it meets the manufacturer's sharpness specifications. Any blades failing this test are rejected or reprocessed. The blades are then soaked in anti-rust oil, which helps prevent corrosion and ensures long-lasting performance. The final stage involves quality inspection, where each blade is carefully examined for any defects. Once they pass, the blades are packaged in specialized protective cases, ready for shipping to consumers. Beam manufacturing at Blue Scope involves a complex yet efficient process of transforming raw materials into finished beams, ready for dispatch. The manufacturing process begins when steel plates, provided by the plate mill, are delivered to the facility. 
These plates can range in thickness from 10 to 40 millimeters and are offloaded from rail wagons onto production lines. The initial step involves cutting the plates to the required dimensions using oxyacetylene cutters. The three primary parts of a beam include the web, which is the central vertical portion, and the two flanges on either side. After cutting, the plates are blasted to remove any rust, scale, or surface defects, ensuring a clean, smooth surface before welding. One of the key advantages of the beam manufacturing process at this workshop is the facility's proximity to the plate mill, which allows for quick turnaround times. The company operates 24 fifths with rotating shifts, allowing for continuous production and rapid response to customer demands. Next, the beam components are moved to the assembly area, where the web and flanges are tack welded into place. This is a critical step, as the web height must be precise to avoid costly remakes. After the assembly, the beams go through sub-arc welding, where both sides of the beams are welded using automatic welders. This process ensures the fillet welds meet required standards for strength and durability. The beams receive multiple welds, typically four 8mm fillets along the length of the beam, to keep them structurally sound. Once the welding is complete, the beams undergo a straightening process if needed, ensuring that they are perfectly square. Any final adjustments, such as cutting the beams to specific lengths or removing defects, are made using saws. Once inspected and found defect-free, the beams are ready for dispatch. Safety is paramount in the process, and employees at here receive thorough training in maintaining a safe working environment ensuring that both the product and the workforce are protected throughout the production cycle. Welcome to the factory, where precision meets industrial strength. Dive into the heart of the production line with this exclusive behind-the-scenes look at how they manufacture top-quality hot-rolled springs. In this video, they take you through the detailed process of hot rolling springs, showcasing the cutting-edge technology and meticulous craftsmanship that goes into every unit produced. From the initial metal rod to the final inspection, experience each step of the dedicated manufacturing process. Hot rolled spring manufacturing begins with selecting high-quality materials, including carbon steel, stainless steel, and alloy steel. These metals are chosen for their strength, durability, and resistance to deformation under stress. The process starts by heating the metal rods to a high temperature, making them malleable and easy to shape. Once heated, the rods are fed into a series of rolling mills where they are gradually shaped into the desired spring form. The hot rolling process involves passing the metal through pairs of rotating rolls, which reduce the thickness and shape the metal into long, coiled springs. Precision is key during this stage, as consistent thickness and coil dimensions are crucial for the spring's performance. After the initial shaping, the springs undergo a series of secondary processes to enhance their properties. This includes quenching, where the hot springs are rapidly cooled in oil or water baths to increase their hardness. Tempering follows, 
where the springs are reheated to a lower temperature and then cooled again to relieve internal stresses and improve toughness. Surface finishing is the next step, ensuring the springs are free from the any imperfections or surface irregularities. By spinning a metal blank on a mandrel while applying localized force through a forming roller. The roller progressively shapes the material against the mandrel, thinning and elongating it without cutting or removing any material. As the roller moves, it follows a specific path controlled by CNC programming to achieve the desired thickness and shape. This process is ideal for producing hollow, axisymmetric components such as cones or cylinders, with the material's wall thickness and geometry being tightly controlled through the speed, pressure, and tool path during forming. The rotary hot swagging machine works by using high-speed rotating dies to compress and shape heated metal workpieces. The process begins with heating the metal to its plastic deformation temperature, ensuring it's malleable. The workpiece is then fed into the machine, where rotating dies repeatedly hammer the metal with controlled force. This radial compression reduces the diameter of the workpiece and can also create tapered or stepped profiles. The continuous rotary action allows for uniform shaping with minimal material waste. This machine is typically used for producing axles, tubes, or shafts, where precision and a smooth finish are important. Hot spinning technology is a precision metal forming process used to manufacture hollow, cylindrical parts such as pressure vessels, rocket motor cases, and gas cylinders. In this process, a metal blank or tube is rotated at high speeds on a lathe while being heated, usually between 400 degrees Celsius and 1,100 degrees Celsius, depending on the material. A set of rollers applies localized pressure, incrementally thinning the material and shaping it into the desired geometry. Typically, hot spinning is performed on high-strength materials like titanium, stainless steel, aluminum, and nickel alloys. The process allows for a 50 to 90% reduction in wall thickness while maintaining the material's tensile strength and hardness. For example, a 100 mm thick aluminum tube could be reduced to a 10 mm wall thickness using hot spinning while retaining its mechanical properties. Hot spinning also offers excellent dimensional accuracy, with tolerances as tight as plus or minus 0.05 mm. This process is often preferred for applications that require seamless, lightweight, and structurally strong components. The diameter of the spun part can range from a few millimeters to several meters. <laughs> 